So I just would like to, as, as president of the state league, I wanted to just have a few comments here now that we are all together in person again, which is so wonderful. And of course, for all those of you who will be watching this later, um, something that has become very clear, I think, in the last couple of years is that democracy is definitely under threat. It's under threat here in the United States, it's under threat in Europe, it's under threat in Ukraine, as we all know. Uh, the International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance is an organization that does a ranking of countries every year to see how we're doing in terms of a scale of being democratic or not being democratic. And they have concluded that uh, there is a rising tide of authoritarianism that is taking over worldwide. So this is a very important time for us in the league, for all of us who believe in democracy, to be aware of what's happening and to be thinking about and taking action in the best way we can. I wanted to just share three things that I think I have learned and appreciated that have come out of the last couple of years. First one, of course, is that democracy is fragile. We can't take it for granted. And it's something that we need to be thinking about and, and thinking about ways of, of supporting and reinforcing all the time. We are doing a program for uh, new leaders in the league called Democracy Champions and had an opportunity to put together some information on leadership. And one of the people that I saw a TED talk from had a very interesting point, which is the second thing I wanna mention. He was talking about uh, that using the analogy of, of what game are we in? And there are games that are finite games, like basketball games or hockey games or whatever it is that's going on right now, where, where the rules are clear, you get to the end, there's an end point and you can tell who won, who lost, and that's the end of it, and there you are. And then there are infinite games where there isn't any way of assessing an end point, and there isn't any final victor. They just keep going. And I think what, what we've realized in the last few years is that democracy is an infinite game. There is no end. There is no final victory. It's something that we have to keep paying attention to and working on all the time. And I think the third thing has become very clear, not only because of what's happened with democracy, but because of what's happened with COVID, is that we need to support each other. We need to, to recognize that our efforts are ones that we share together. That, that I, In fact, I had a league member give the analogy, I don't know how many of you know this, about geese. But when geese fly in a bee, the, the head goose, is breaking the air currents for all the geese behind them. And they take turns taking that V so that the lead goose doesn't have to do it all the time. And all the other geese, I don't know if you've ever heard them, I mean, I love it. They all go, whoa, 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 you know, they cheer each other on all the time. And it's like, oh, geese, they're so amazing because there they are making their way. And it's a very uneven, from, from our perspective, uneven with the bee. But that's because they're following where the air currents are going. And that's the lesson of geese, to, to rotate around, support each other, and cheer each other on. And I think that's a critical part of what we need to be doing with each other right now. Because we are in it for the long haul. And this is not something that's going to resolve itself in the next legislative session, it's not going to resolve itself in the next five years. This is something that is a lifelong commitment for us, for our children, for the generations to come. So I just wanted to, to suggest two things that I've been thinking about. I know the theme of today's retreat is women power the vote. And that happens to be a theme that the league has been nationally using for the last few years. But I think I'd like to kind of suggest we change that to the League Powers Democracy. I think that that is, democracy is way more than voting. And that's something that we're now learning, that, that voting is, is, is part of it, but it isn't the whole story. Um, democracy is, a, is an exercise in inclusion. It's an exercise in, in respect for, for other people. 
Um, I happen to have an opportunity to hear a little bit about an excellent example of, of a, a person who carries out inclusion and democracy very well. Um, and that is Wadad Cruzado. And I know we're here at the University of Montana, but Wadad Cruzado is the president of MSU. And she is uh, born in, I don't know if she was raised, but she was born in Puerto Rico. She, I think she was raised in Puerto Rico because her first position in, in the running, helping to run a college was in Puerto Rico. She came to the MSU 10, over 10 years ago and um, has just revolutionized that whole campus because she is a bone deep inclusionary person. Um, their student population has gone up 5,000 from 12,000 to 17,000 under leadership. Their student retention rate has gone to 78% of their first year students to one in the second year. And the, the trick, the, the, the reason behind it, and I know it's not a trick, but what she does is, um, Maynan went there for a dinner before the big uh, thing that MSU hosted last week on the Constitution. And at the dinner, they had students serving the people who were at the dinner. And Wadad Cruzado stopped the dinner and actually introduced every single student and had each one of them say what they were studying, where they were from. And, and she, I'm sure, is the one who thought of the idea of having a Native American student read the testimony that the Native American students who came to the Constitutional Convention in 1972, that Nene Ann referred to earlier, that they gave it that at that event, she had one of her Native American students read that testimony in that uh, broadcast they did last week. So, so that is an example of inclusion. It's an example of here in Montana, who would have thought that a, a short little woman from Puerto Rico would become the premier president of the university, of, of the Montana State University? That is just so, uh, to me, is a testimony of how this works. When you do it right, it works. Doesn't matter where you start from, it will work. So I am very excited about moving forward. My second point is that not only does the League Power Democracy but at this stage of the game, we are not really in the game of defending it. Because you know what, folks? We don't have a democracy anymore. There is an organization called the Polity Project Center for Systemic Peace that rates countries every year on their level of democracy. And in 2020, we slipped down below the cutoff point and ceased to be ranked as a democracy. And we're now ranked as an anocracy, which is teetering in between democracy and authoritarianism. So I, I would like to suggest that what we do is we nurture democracy. I think that word nurture is one that captures the kind of thing that Wadad Cruzado does. It's recognizing everyone, it's respecting everyone, it's using every moment that we have as a learning opportunity or a teaching opportunity to be able to say, this is what democracy looks like. We practice it in the league. If you stop and think about it, there is no other national organization that derives what it's going to do from grassroots consensus building, from the 700 and plus league that it had all over the country. And that's what this league does. We, we generate our program by having everybody suggest their ideas and coming to a consensus and going forward. And that's an amazing thing to be doing in this day and age. It slows us down, but it gives us a depth that does not exist in any other organization that I know of. So let's not be discouraged if we don't win all these battles that are going to be coming. Because it's not about the battles. It's about the long game. It's about using every opportunity we have to be able to talk about and demonstrate what democracy should be. Ukraine has shown that there are people all over the world who are rallying behind them because freedom and democracy go hand in hand. And that is something that we can move forward with, with confidence. It may be a while before we can get enough momentum going again in this state to be able to get people to recognize what's going on. But I think that that's why we're here. We're here to be here for the long game. And the league is a big tent. We are a big tent. We're an inclusionary tent. I don't know how many of you saw 
the presentation last week from MSC, I think it was last week, I'm losing track of which week was week, but anyway, um, the final capstone remark of a compelling, compelling appreciation of our constitution came from Republican Governor Mark Rossman. So we, we have a big tent on purpose. We are nonpartisan because fundamentally, what it is that is most important is that we all believe in how democracy is supposed to work. We can argue all we want to about whether or not we should have this policy or that policy, but fundamentally, we're all committed to having how we make those decisions be the democratic method. And I think as a league, we need to be recentering ourselves to recognizing that that is the most important thing going forward, that we all engage in this game from this place of integrity to the rules and to understanding and to respect for each other. So I'd like to just end this section with a quote from Martin Luther King. And I would like to also note that this quote was actually in the field call from the National League that happened earlier this week. It's a quote that may be familiar to some of you, but I think it, it really speaks to the heart of who we are and where we're going. This is the quotation from Martin Luther King. Power without love is reckless and abusive. And love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best is love, implementing the demands of justice. And justice at its best is power, correcting everything that stands against love. So that's the charge I think we are facing as a, as a League of Women Voters in Montana. A charge to go out and practice what we preach of respecting everyone, of carrying the banner for what democracy is supposed to look like and for, for living what it is that we would like to see. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and play the uh, Montana slideshow. And now it's my turn to try to fit my little narratives into the 20 second slots. I think I have it rolled, set up for you there. Do I, do I keep recording? You keep recording until after this is over. Okay. And then you just hit play from start. We were awarded a $7,000 grant from National to advocate for federal voting rights legislation. The state league took out ads in 60 Montana papers, hired a social media intern, hosted a national speaker on For the People Act, and started Wednesday nights of action. It isn't over yet. Watch for more on the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. People powered maps. We got a $3,000 grant as part of a 50 state campaign to engage people in redistricting. A team of league members from all four leagues crafted the league's response to the Montana congressional mapping process. More to come as legislative redistricting begins in June. Okay, just hit the little arrow at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. National, uh, we had state and local leadership submit guest opinion pieces in major newspapers on a number of topics, including voting rights, voting legislation, and redistricting. These columns garnered public recognition for the league and increased our visibility. Let me just do it. Okay, why don't you just do it? All right. In the past two years, the State League has been part of three lawsuits, one to support mail ballot option and two to protect our independent judiciary. Track record so far, one win, win, one loss, and one win that will be challenged. The presence of the League in House Bill 325 suit was a major factor in allowing the suit to proceed. Voter Girl, we've purchased the curriculum for a civics education program for the Girl Scouts and a team of league members from both Montana and Wyoming are working together with the Girl Scout Council to put on a voter girl event for junior and cadet scouts April 23rd in Bozeman. And you can still volunteer, Jan, raise your hand. Just let that woman know. All right. And we have two league members in the 1970s with Governor Judge posing with the Guide to State Government written by the league and used to teach civics. This year, the league is providing democracy champions training for a new generation of league members so they can help the league champion democracy in Montana 
in the future. And that's Gladys Harden there on the side, and she's a league member from Missoula. Uh, Montana would not have its constitution if it weren't for the league. The state league is partnering with the Constitutional Convention Society and Leadership Montana on two events, community conversations on May 23rd, more information coming, and a two-day conference in Helena, June 15th and 16th that will be live streamed. It's time to, all, just about time to prepare for the next legislative session. Last time around, we had a team of 15 members that monitored different subject areas and um, monitored 70 bills. The league submitted testimony 72 times, issued 116 action alerts to members, and we will be seeking volunteers for the 2023 session. You don't need to know anything to volunteer because we will give you everything you need to know about how to do that. And we are supporting DEI. It's a major focus of the league at all different levels. And last year, a wonderful DEI state team put on a training in which we had 26 members from across all four leagues. This fall, watch for DEI training from Sim Covington, a nationally known black educator. The league provides a lot of technical assistance for leagues as well. We provide the website, we provide Zoom meeting and Zoom webinar tech, and we provide outreach circle. Through the end of 2022, we're also contacting to provide social media tech support, and I want to introduce our social media tech support person right there, Nisha Wollman. Nisha will be available and getting in touch with you all to help spiff up your social media skills and help make us nimble. We've decided what we need to be is nimble in the future so we can respond to whatever's going on quickly and effectively. So who is the Montana League? Anyhow. Well, the Montana League is us. As Pogo said, we have seen the enemy and it is us. No, it is, it is us. There is no league that exists independently of all of you. There is no Montana League other than the board of people who get together and try to give some direction once in a while. So if uh, any of you are interested in helping with any of these projects, um, this is the time to be thinking about those and to volunteer. There is a volunteer sign-up sheet way back there on the information table and you can indicate what area of all of this you want to help with. So with that, um, I will turn to the next part of our agenda, which is the approval of program. And um, Lisa, do you know how to pull up a document? Well, it is a Mac. <laughs> That's true. Just give me a minute and I will pull up the program. If you all want to turn to 